at some point, battery electric vehicles are going to end up here as well. They too will also disappear into the shredder. But what will happen to the lithium ion batteries? Can the valuable substances contained in the batteries be recovered? Lithium can be recycled. It is a valuable substance that can be reused in high quality. The first recycling plants for lithium ion batteries are being built around the globe. A circular economy for a raw material that is important for e-mobility is being created. This is how it will work. Before an electric car is shredded, the battery will be removed. Batteries contain valuable metals such as cobalt, nickel, manganese, and the metal coveted above all, lithium. The battery contains a large number of individual anodes and cathodes. An anode consists of a copper foil coated with a thin layer of black graphite. The cathode consists of a thin sheet of aluminum foil. All the valuable metals such as lithium can be found here. In addition, lithium is also contained in dissolved form in a liquid electrolyte. To prevent a short circuit, there is a so-called separator between the cathode and the anode. When the battery is charged, the lithium ions flow from one electrode to the other. When discharging, the process occurs in the opposite direction. No current can flow between the anode and the cathode without lithium ions. And if the current cannot flow, then of course the electric vehicle won't be able to move. These thin electrode foils are what store the energy for an electric car. An aluminum foil with cathode materials is set next to a white separator, and then a copper foil with graphite, and so on and so forth. Countless such electrode foils are connected in parallel in a single cell. And several hundred such cells are in the large battery of an electric car. Ultimately, cathode and anode cells with an area of over 400 square meters store the energy to power an electric vehicle. At the Duesenfeld facility in Lower Saxony in Germany, engineers have developed a recycling process for lithium-ion batteries. And the recycling process itself is very energy efficient. The lithium-ion batteries help power their own recycling process. In the first step, they are definitively deep discharged. This means that all the electrical energy is taken from the battery and used for operation in the facility. The company has its own discharge station. Here, technicians can connect individual cells, modules, and even batteries with a voltage of up to 1,000 volts to the factory's power grid. Since all of the company's aggregates and processes are electrically powered, the electricity still present in the battery supplies around 50% of the energy needed to recycle them. The rest comes from the power grid. Once the battery has been fully discharged, technicians can safely disassemble it into its individual components. So far, the batteries have mainly come from the research and development departments of large automotive companies. Since the batteries will increasingly be coming from older electric cars no longer in use, the batteries will be from an even wider variety of different manufacturers and will consist of different materials. It would therefore make sense to label them with a so-called battery passport. The battery passport would play an enormously important role in the recycling of lithium-ion batteries. It can both specify which quantities of which substances are contained in the battery so that recycling processes can be adapted to the specific cell or the ingredients 
And the battery passport would document the entire CO2 footprint from production to recycling over the entire product life cycle of the battery. After dismantling the battery, the technicians place the modules, or even the individual cells, onto a conveyor belt. These contain valuable raw materials such as cobalt, nickel, manganese, and lithium. Half a ton of material per hour can be transported to a shredder in this manner. The cells also still contain the liquid electrolyte, which is highly flammable. For this reason, shredding takes place using nitrogen packaging gas. This protective gas prevents uncontrolled reactions. The components of a battery are all crushed to about two centimeters in diameter. The granules are then conveyed to a special vacuum dryer. The battery, which had been shredded, is now inside this container. The battery's housing, which had consisted of plastic and metal, has been broken down into thousands of small parts. The electrodes have been crushed as well. On the cathodes, however, there are still valuable metals, such as the lithium, among others. In addition, the lithium is still in a dissolved form in tiny droplets of the electrolyte. These droplets are now distributed throughout the shredded material. In the vacuum dryer, there is a negative pressure of 300 millibar and a temperature held below 80 degrees Celsius. The electrolyte evaporates and the lithium precipitates as a result of this. And a lithium salt is formed on the granules. The gaseous electrolyte is withdrawn and exposed once again to normal pressure. This causes the organic liquid to condense. It is collected and can be reused. The granules from the vacuum dryer continue to be processed mechanically. Air separators, impact mills, and special sieves separate it into different parts. In the course of this process, the metal compounds adhering to the electrode foils, as well as the lithium salt, are shaken off from the larger parts. The individual substances are collected in large bags. The valuable substances, such as cobalt, nickel, manganese, and lithium, as well as the graphite, are now in a powder-like black material. Due to its color, this part is called the black mass. In addition to the liquid electrolyte, various groups of solids are produced. The shredded battery casing, the separator foil, the black mass, and the shredded copper and aluminum foils of the cathodes and anodes. This process makes sure there is a clean separation of all materials contained in the battery. Almost 100% of the lithium originally contained in the battery can now be found in the black mass. The entire process is emission-free, by the way. We employ a low temperature process. No materials are burned, no toxic gas is produced. The electric power for the operation of the plant is provided on the one hand from renewable sources, and on the other hand, it comes directly from the electricity discharged from the batteries. The whole process is CO2 neutral. Every year, 3,000 tons of recycled materials packed in bags leave the company. And these contain materials neatly separated according to their parts, such as plastic, aluminum, and copper. The materials can easily be recycled using conventional processes. However, in order to recover the valuable substances from the black mass, it must be further processed. Chemists at the TU Bag Academy Freiberg in Saxony have developed a patented process for exactly this purpose. 
Together with engineers from Fraunhofer IKTS, they are using it in a pilot plant. In what is known as the cool process, a suspension is produced from water and black mass. They fill this into a reactor. At high pressure, 100 bar, and at a temperature of over 200 degrees Celsius, water and carbon dioxide are also added. The carbon dioxide in the reactor is in a so-called supercritical state. This particularly active carbonic acid is the first to dissolve the lithium from the black mass. A solid and a liquid part are formed. The lithium is in the aqueous phase, and the other metal compounds containing cobalt, nickel, and manganese remain in the solid phase. What is worth noting about this process is that we can recover the lithium selectively. This means that the lithium remains in the solution and the other heavy metals in the residue. After the reaction, engineers allow the contents of the reactor to flow through a special filter consisting of many chambers. Cobalt, nickel, and manganese remain in the filter as a black residue. Through further metallurgical processing, these metals can be recovered from the mass. The lithium is in the liquid phase. This liquid is then concentrated. After that, the engineers pour the solution which contains the lithium into another reactor. Here, the metal precipitates at around 90 degrees Celsius. White lithium carbonate is produced with a high level of purity. The quality of the lithium carbonate is essentially battery quality, which means more than 99.8%. And that means we can close the loop and put this product directly into production. The lithium carbonate can be used directly in battery production. The cool process used to produce the white powder is efficient and environmentally friendly. It enables around 95% of the lithium contained in the black mass to be recovered. Since the Duesenfeld process captures almost all of the lithium contained in the battery in the black mass, by combining the two processes, a very high rate of recycling can be reached. To sum it up, this is what the process could look like in the future. The lithium ion battery is removed from the electric vehicle. Lithium is a galvanic element, meaning it is a hazardous material. So it would make sense to keep the distance to the nearest recycling plant short to simplify transport. At the recycling plant, the material is separated into its individual parts. Then the black mass is processed by companies who are specialized in this. Among other things, lithium carbonate is produced as part of the process. This important raw material is used in battery production. These batteries then supply the energy needed for electric cars. And this completes the cycle for lithium ion batteries. Even if electric cars will one day look old and ready to be junked, the giant shredder in the scrapyard will not necessarily mean the end of a lithium ion battery. <laughs>